Before getting into today's case, we'd like to give a shout out to today's long-term sponsor, Babbel. Babbel, for those who don't know, is a language learning app which provides award-winning courses in languages such as French, Spanish, Italian, Dutch, German and many more. I have always been passionate about becoming fluent in another language and Babbel is helping me achieve that. Having studied Spanish and Italian at university a few years ago, I wanted to refresh my skills, so I have been going on the app daily to do so, and I've now achieved certificates through Babbel. I've made it a New Year's resolution to learn even more languages, mainly the Scandinavian languages, and you can too. I started studying Norwegian a few months ago and using Babbel daily has helped enormously in retaining vocabulary and grammar and there are plenty of exciting and engaging activities available in reading, writing, listening and speaking, most of which are only 10 minutes per lesson. Unlike several other language learning apps on the market, the content made by Babbel has been made by genuine speakers of the languages and don't work by an algorithm or material generated by computers. The content is also enormously useful as it prepares the learner for real-life situations, such as asking for directions or ordering food at a restaurant. It's not just the language you learn, it's the culture too. Another fantastic aspect of Babbel is that there are no adverts and you can participate in lessons offline as well. Doing just a quarter of an hour of Babbel per day will have you speaking a new language in just a few weeks. You can even further your learning with new upgrades on the Babbel app, such as short stories, culture clips, a podcast and Babbel Live, where you can add live classes to your existing subscription for an additional fee or just subscribe to them as a standalone product. Babbel also now offers a 20-day money-back guarantee on all subscriptions, meaning you can rest assured knowing you can try out the app with no financial commitment. To get this amazing offer and learn a new language in 2022, head to the link in the description below to get 65% off a Babbel subscription with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Once again, thank you so much to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. If you were to mention the name Philip Cairns to Dubliners today, almost everyone would know who you were talking about and what happened to him back in October of 1986. This case has baffled Irish authorities for over 35 years and despite extensive investigations, Philip Cairns has never been located. His family still desperate for answers. Life stood still for the Cairns family, following his strange disappearance. Philip Cairns was born on September 1st, 1973, to parents Alice and Philip Cairns Sr. in Ireland. Philip lived in a busy household with his four sisters, Mary, Sandra, Helen and Suzanne, and a younger brother, Owen. Philip was a happy, kind, quiet and thoughtful boy who, according to his sister Sandra, got along with everyone. Philip was also known as a very religious teenager, his family coming from a Catholic background. Philip enjoyed spending a lot of time with his younger brother Owen, the two of them enjoying playing football together, going fishing with their father and hurling. Philip also had a talent for angling and had even won several trophies over the years. On October 23rd, 1986, 13-year-old Philip left his high school at approximately 12.45pm to return to his home on Ballyrone Road in Rathfarnham, a suburb of Dublin, for his lunch. 
At 1.30pm, he began the 15-minute walk back to school as usual. However, he never arrived and was reported missing after his mother, Alice, returned home to find her eldest daughter, Mary, in an anxious and worried state. She told her mother that Philip hadn't returned home from school and this in itself was a huge red flag. Philip was a very responsible boy and wouldn't have gone off alone without telling someone. Hundreds of Garda officers, along with dive teams, took part in one of the largest searches for a child in Irish history, scouring nearby forests, lakes, mountains and rivers in the days that followed. However, there was no trace of the schoolboy. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. Cairn's classmates were interviewed by Gardy at the school during their midterm holiday break, the week following Philip's vanishing. The Cairns did all they could to get Philip's face out there, including regular segments on the news and managing to get posters distributed by local milk companies. Six days after his disappearance, Philip's school bag was located by two teen girls in an alley close to his house. Interestingly though, the lane had already been searched by police after Philip had disappeared and the bag was not there at that time. Garde police suspecting that it had been planted there. Also, it had been heavily raining the days prior, however, the bag itself was bone dry. The school bag was thought to be a vital piece of evidence, but despite it being examined by forensic experts, no clues of any significance were found. Inside the bag were Philip's belongings, his pens, pencils, a copybook, a maths textbook, his school journal and his pencil case, though authorities managed to determine that some things were missing, including a geography book and two religion books. Other than this, no clues were found that gave authorities any idea as to where Philip might be. Over 400 sightings were reported in the aftermath of the boy's disappearance. However, none of them ever led to the 13-year-old. On the 20th anniversary of Philip's disappearance in October of 2006, the Cairns family issued an appeal for information, citing that they had not given up all hope of finding him alive. A further appeal for information was launched the following year in 2007, when it emerged that over 50 people had approached investigators individually and had provided new lines of inquiry. Irish Crime Stoppers Trust offered a €10,000 reward for information during this appeal. Within 24 hours, over 80 people had been in contact with the Garda or Crime Stoppers with potential leads. In Dublin in May 2009, a stretch of private wooded land near a golf club on the M50 motorway was searched thoroughly by investigators, with specialists searching for soil movement in that particular area and in another spot around 50 metres away. An elderly woman from Dublin itself told Garda that a man she was in a relationship with some time before had confessed to killing Philip Cairns and dumping his body at both sites that had been searched. This turned out not to be the case, as the searches of both areas turned up nothing of significance, no belongings of Philip's or any bones. The man in question was not charged due to lack of evidence. 
Suspects came and went in the case. However, in 2016, new developments emerged. In 2002, convicted paedophile Eamon Cook, a former DJ and owner of popular pirate radio station Radio Dublin, was charged with various sex crimes against four girls, decades after rumours circulated that he was abusing children. After serving a mere three years in prison, Cook's conviction was quashed on a technicality and he was released. However, in 2007, he faced trial once again and received a 10-year sentence after being convicted of sexually abusing two more young girls. A female witness claiming to be one of his victims came forward in May of 2016, tying Eamon Cook to Philip Cairns' disappearance. The witness said she was in another room of the radio station building, which was located 15 minutes away from where Philip vanished, when she heard loud noises coming from the studio. Upon entering, the witness states that she saw Philip lying bleeding on the floor after Cook had struck him with an implement. The witness subsequently fainted after witnessing this and woke up inside Cook's vehicle. She never saw Philip again. The Garda police found the witness's story to be credible and questioned Cook, but by this point he had been transferred to hospice care because he was dying of lung cancer and suffering from dementia. Cook allegedly shared some details which seemed to corroborate the witness's story, but he did not make a confession or reveal the location of Philip's body before he passed away. Shockingly, a mere two days after his death in June of 2016, one of Cook's family members discovered a handwritten letter in a storage unit he owned, containing the words, quote, Sorry to Philip for everything that happened. In part of this letter, Cook actually referred to, quote, his son, Philip, despite never having a biological child by that name. Investigators compared Cook's DNA to the DNA samples that were found on Philip's school bag. However, it was not a match, although it's been rumoured that Cook may have coerced some children into planting the bag in the alleyway for him to cover his tracks. It is debated, however, if Eamon Cook was responsible for Philip's disappearance, as he was awaiting sentence for another crime at the time, the initial sentencing day for Cook being the day before Philip vanished. Whether Cook was involved or not remains a mystery to this day. Philip's mother, Alice Cairns, lights a candle for her lost son every night. His sisters, Sandra and Suzanne, are active in helping missing children organisations. As time has passed, the Cairns family have kept Philip's case very close to their chests, rarely speaking to the media in later years. The pain of losing their son has been harrowing. Unfortunately, Philip's father, Phil Sr., passed away in July 2014 without ever knowing what happened to his son. According to Philip's sister Mary, whilst speaking on an RTE scandal documentary, all the Cairns family want is to bring Philip home so he can be laid to rest. Aside from the heavy impact of Philip's disappearance on his family, the community were extremely affected too. They feared for the safety of their own children as Philip disappeared in broad daylight during an afternoon, something which is highly unusual. Parents became more vigilant, some insisting that their children were never to walk home alone again. In October of 2021, 35 years after Philip disappeared, the Garda appealed to the public for information. They told the Irish Times, quote, Following the passage of time and changing circumstances, these people may now be in a position to assist us. 
there may be persons who were young at the time of Philip's disappearance and not in a position to provide Angarda Shiokana with information who may now be able to come forward. Even the smallest piece of information, which may seem insignificant, may assist the investigation. Police have also reassured that anyone who does come forward, any information given will be dealt with discreetly and with utmost sensitivity. As of early 2022, the disappearance of Philip Cairns remains unsolved. He was 13 years old when he disappeared, of a medium build, standing at approximately 5 feet 2 inches tall, weighing 91 pounds. He had dark hair and hazel eyes and had a small birthmark under his chin. On the day he vanished, Philip was wearing his secondary school uniform. Specific details regarding what he was wearing that day is unknown and he was carrying his faded grey canvas school bag, which was later found. For those with any information which may be useful to authorities, you can contact the Garda Confidential phone line on 1800 